الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اتبع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد to proceed In this lesson we want to speak بإذن الله تعالى in greater detail concerning the second type of word in Arabic and that is al-fi'lu or the verb and as we know there are three types of al-fa'alu verbs in Arabic we have al-madi which relates to the past tense al-mudari'u which relates to al-halu the present or al-mustaqbalu the future and we have al-amru the command form in which we issue a directive or a command to the one who is being addressed so the title of today's lesson will be ahwalul af'al ahwal al Af'ali Because that's an Adafa construct Al-Af'ali Ahwalul Af'ali meaning the states of Al-Af'alu, the verbs To begin therefore, we want to mention the three categories What they represent How we recognize them and we will give examples of them insha'Allah ta'ala the first therefore is al-madi al-madi madi al-fi'lu al-madi it relates to the past tense so an action that started in the past and it completed in the past too and we recognize al-madi by certain characteristics that the grammarians over the years have used to identify al-madi from them they mentioned that one of the unique characteristics is what they call which refers to the ta asakina with a sukun that comes on the end of a normal fi'lun such as if we take kataba kataba Kataba, as we know, relates to he wrote. Kataba. It comprises of the fitlon kataba and it comprises of here in this instance a ta with a sukun on the end. That is what they refer to as ta'u atanithi asakina. And it's one of the characteristics that they mention that allows us to identify a fi'lun. Of course, it would identify it as being al-madi, a past tense fi'lun. So, kataba we know means he wrote. If we append ta'u at-ta'nithi asakina, on the end we have katabat, and it means she wrote. Now, ta'u at-ta'nitha sakina is not the only addition we add on to the end of a fi'lun, ma'din, that identifies it as a fi'lun. We also have a series of other endings called ad-dama'iru or ta'u damir ta'u ad-damir. So the letter ta is used for other purposes. And they can be, for example, Katab to 
So here we have Ta'u al-Damir. This Ta is also referred to Ta al-Fa'il, Ta of the doer. It's also referred to as Ta al-Mutaharrika, meaning the Ta that its haraka changes. Of course, it's changed from a sukun to a dhamma here. So we can say here, Kitab to I wrote. And then we can say, Kitab ta you wrote. And we can say, Kitab T you wrote, single female. And then we have the others, Tuma. Tum and Tun. Tuma. Tum and Tunna. Therefore, to summarize, the first indicator that they mentioned is that we can have a Ta'u Ta'nitha Sakin on the end and it becomes Katabat. She wrote. The others are also called Ta'u Ad Damir, which relates to Ad Damirun, which is the Tu, the Ta, the Ti, the Tuma, the Tum, and the Tunna being appended to the end to form the different conjugations. So we have Katab to I wrote, Katab Ta you wrote, Katab Ti you wrote single female, Katab Tuma you too wrote, Katab Tum you wrote plural and Katab Tunna you wrote uh, plural female. So that's male and that's female. That's male and that's female. So this is something that most of you will probably be already familiar with. But this is mentioned by way of an introduction and it also helps you to understand the classical texts that summarize grammar because it's one of their uh, issues or points that they raise how to identify al-fi'lu, the verb. So that is al-madi. <coughs> al-mudari'u, which is the second type, mudar. Ri'u relates to that which is taking place now. Al-Halu or will take place shortly called uh, Al-Mustaqabalu, the future. So if we take Kataba for example, we say uh, she wrote would be uh, Taktubu. Taktubu. And similarly, Katabtu in the present would be Aktubu. I am writing Aktubu. Katabta you wrote would be single male Taktubu. You wrote single female would be Taktubina. Tak to be na. Tak to be na. And then you two wrote tak to bani. So we end with the a ni sound. And then we have the una. The una sound. And then we have the una sound. So. This, these are the conjugations of al mudariu and the grammarians mention that they're recognized by a certain uh, haruf that can enter upon them or that can precede them. So amongst the most common ones therefore is the seen. The seen relates to when it enters upon al mudari it relates to al mustaqbalu al qaribu the close future so whenever you have seen entering upon al mudari know that it is al mudari and the scene represents the close future 
The other common one is sofa. Sofa. So, sofa before al mudari such as aktabu, it means the al mustaqbalu al baidu the distant future. Therefore, sofa aktabu means I will write, meaning in the future. Seen is the close future. The other two that are very common would be lam for negation and taking the meaning to the past and len for the negation of the verb and taking the meaning to the future and they have an effect upon al mudari so if you say lam taktub or if you say lam before taktubu it becomes mudzumun because the lam is harfu jazmin wa nahyin it's a harfun that renders the fitlun mudzumun with a sukun and it negates it. So if you say lam taqtub, then it means you, single male, did not write. Or if you're addressing or speaking about a female, it could also mean she did not write. I in the past. If you place len before the fitlon, then it has the effect of negating it in the future. As in the ayah that we all read in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah فَإِن لَمْ تَفْأَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْأَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارِ Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned that if you cannot do this I uh, produce a surah like one in Al-Quran فَإِن لَمْ تَفْأَلُوا and if you did not do this وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا And you cannot do it فَتَّكُنْ نَارَ Then fear of fire But the point to note is that both لَمْ and لَنْ are used for negation in the ayah preceding تَفْعَلُونَ therefore rendering it مَجْزُومٌ in the first instance and منصوبٌ in the second So if لَنْ precedes تَكْتُبِينَ what do we do? To render taktubina madzumun, we drop the noon and it becomes taktubi len taktubi. So we have four very common harufun that enter upon al mudari, which indicate that it is al mudari. These uh, cannot enter upon al madi The seen and the sofa, which are uh, harful uh, al istikabal, a harfun that represents the future, clearly cannot enter upon al madi And similarly, lam and lan cannot. In order to negate the al madi we use ma. So these four identifiers indicate that the word is al mudari'u which is the second type of fi'lun the third type of fi'lun the final one is al amru al amru al amru it relates to the command form of the verb so if you are addressing an individual and you want them to write, then you would say Uktub. Uktub. So the first indicator that the grammarians mention, which represents uh, Al Amru, is the Siga, the way it's formed itself. It's a request. So when you have a request which isn't preceded by the lam of the request, the talab, and that will be explained in a different lesson, but the point to note is you have a verb that's not preceded by a lam, which is a lam of a talab, or al-amr, the request, then know that your fi'lun, 
because it conveys the meaning of a request, then it is al amru, a command form. It's a third form or type of fi'lun. There are two other indicators that the grammarians mention by which we recognize al amru. The first of them is what they say is ya ya u al mukhatabati al muannathati which relates to the ya which is attached to al amru in order for you to address a female so if we were addressing a single female and we wanted her to write then we would say uk to B Uk to B and there's a sukun on the end which is not usually written that is why we read for example in Surah Maryam when Allah Azza wa Jalla addressed Maryam alayhi salam he said to her Kuli wash rabi wa qarri ayna Allah Azza wa Jalla said Kuli you eat wash arabi and you drink waqari ayna and allow your eye literally it's talking about your eye being uh, a source of being comfortable uh, it relates it's an expression about being content and happy qari ayna so we have three commands there all of them end with a ya that ya is referred to ya u al mukhatabati so the ya of the one being addressed al muannathati who is female that ya there the other indicator that they mention represents um, or can enter upon al amru is the noon at tawkeed what do we mean by the noon of tawkeed if we say for example uktub uktub or we say ijlis ijlis which means sit down uh, or we say ishrab which means drink ishrab ijlis October. Each of these are a command form. The indicator that highlights or represents the command form is a sigha. It's the way it's formed. The way it's formed is that of a talab, a request. There are no other indicators that it is al amru except the formation of the word. Now, if we enter the Nuna Tawqeed onto each one of these, then what does it mean? We have to say Uktu Banna. Uktu Banna. Ijli Sanna. Ishra Banna. We have to remove the Sukun on the end and we place the relevant vowel but as you can see that now says uktubanna which means you uh, write and there's a noon tawqeed of emphasis meaning you certainly or indeed you write ejli sanna indeed you sit and ishra banna which means you uh, drink and that's the second indicator. So the first is Ya'u al Mukhatabati al Mu'annathati, and the second is Noon al Tawqeed. So we have three types of verbs in Arabic al Madi, al Mudari'u, and al Amru, and each one of them has certain unique characteristics by which we can identify them either with an addition as in al madi or one in which we can append to the beginning 
or we can introduce rather than a pen because we're not attaching it except for so that would be attached but so for lemon and are separate but they proceed al mudari or we append it to the end of al amru which would indicate it is al fi'lu amrin either with ya at ta'neeth al mukhataba or ya al mukhataba at ta'neeth al mu'annathati or ishrabanna the noon at tawkid that's what we wanted to mention therefore regarding the three types of verbs and uh, some indicators regarding how we identify them. It's not intended to be an exhaustive list because there are others but they will be discussed insha'Allah ta'ala in a future lesson. We will conclude on that point. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka. وأتوب إليك